So I think I just found the best tech find uh, in the last 12 months, at least for me, because, well, let's be honest, subscriptions suck. The less money you have coming out of your account every month, the better, right? Well, let me go ahead and introduce to you your own personal local cloud with local AI. This is the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800 Plus, and if this looks all techy and difficult to understand, um, don't worry, Ugreen made it so simple a caveman could use it. This is my first NAS that I've used, and I pretty much figured it all out within 15 to 30 minutes of just playing around with it. This truly is beginner friendly. When Ugreen says that, they actually mean it. And you know, I apologize in advance for any terminology I may get wrong. I'm a newbie when it comes to NAS and stuff like that. So I may get some words wrong, but you'll you'll understand the context of what I'm trying to say. So what exactly is a NAS? Well, NAS is network attached storage. So you can think of it as a really large external hard drive that you could use anywhere in the world, no matter where you are, as long as you have Internet. Ugreen was awesome enough to send me this NAS, including four four terabyte drives, but I actually ended up liking this NAS so much that I actually went out and bought four 14 terabyte drives and a one terabyte SSD for caching. Yeah, that did burn a small hole in my wallet, but that amount of storage will easily outlast me and this tortoise. They live forever. That's why I made that weird comparison. Anyway, moving on. So who exactly is this for and why should you even consider it? Well, if you're like me, you probably have Google Drive, iCloud, Dropbox, and any of the other hundreds of cloud-based storages. In fact, I recently had to upgrade my iCloud account because my Final Cut Pro projects were getting too big to the point where I had to completely wipe my computer from my projects every month just so I can have a clean slate and don't run out of space. That's why I upgraded to iCloud, $20 a month. And I was also paying for Google Drive, $20 a month. That's 40 bucks just in storage. Those cloud-based services are pretty much using something like this, uh, but just a lot bigger, like a lot, a lot bigger, right? They have entire server farms. And so what you're doing essentially is what, anytime you subscribe to iCloud or Google Drive, you're essentially just renting out their own NAS. In other words, right? You know, you know what I mean. That, of course, adds up cost over time. The longer you use it, I've been using Google Drive for seven years, going on eight years. Uh, I've spent a lot of money on it. I, I, I agree. Uh, but not only does it add up cost over time, but it's also not exactly secure. Uh, we've seen this before. Yeah, that was rough. And of course, downloading and uploading data from these cloud-based storages, they are excruciatingly slow. In fact, I will actually do a comparison in this video comparing to and from the NAS and also to and from Google Drive, just so you guys can see the insane amount of difference. I mean, it, 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 it literally saves me hours. I'm not even joking. And that's because this Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800 Plus, try saying that fast five times in a row, it can transfer at 1,250 megabytes per second, not megabits, megabytes. So you can transfer a one terabyte file in 20 minutes. What? If I tried that to Google Drive, that would take me multiple hours, if not over 24 hours, depending on if Google is having a good day with their servers. I'm currently using, like I said, four four terabyte Western digital drives in my NAS in a RAID 5 setup. Meaning if one drive fails, all I do is just unplug it, put in a new drive, and then the remaining three drives are going to rebuild what the fourth drive lost. And again, for me, that is extremely important. And that's what I like because Ugreen doesn't lock down their NAS systems to like specific drives. In fact, I'm looking at a list right now. They they have, uh, I mean, they have a list of drives that will work with the NAS. The, it's a huge list. They even have a RAM list and M.2 SSD list if you ever want to upgrade in the future. I'm actually planning on getting 16 gigs of RAM and replacing that with the built-in eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, which the NAS comes with. So they have a really large list and you can kind of just pick and choose which company you want to go for, what storage you want to go for. Again, it's all very user-friendly. You don't have to be a, like a scientist to figure this out. 
Now, the NAS itself looks incredible and it's built like a tank. Uh, the front of the NAS has your four bays which lock so you don't pop out your drives accidentally. Now, towards the bottom, we have the power button and indicator lights for the LAN as well as the four bays. And we also have an SD card slot, which would be crazy useful for photographers, videographers, or just moving some miscellaneous files around. Further right, we have a USB Type-C and USB A3.2, both at 10 gigabit per second speeds. The rear of the NAS includes the magnetic dust filter, which by the way, is such a genius move. No screws, you just lift it out. <laughs> like you just give it like a little shake the dust flies everywhere but that's fine and then you put it back in boom no screws you're all good you're good to go and we have an hdmi port another usb 3.2 port two usb 2.0 ports as well as 2.5 gigabit ethernet and 10 gigabit ethernet and of course the power input we're not done yet the bottom of the NAS includes an area where you can put in two SSDs, either for caching or for more storage, and it even comes with thermal pads. Uh, you can even upgrade the RAM on the NAS. Uh, this is because the NAS is it's kind of basically its own computer. It has its own RAM, CPU, and GPU. So yeah, it's basically a computer. Now the total storage, I mean, this is just mind blowing. The total storage of this NAS that it can handle, 112 terabytes terabytes that's 112,000 gigabytes i think I, i'm pretty sure that's well i mean not really because it's not like a direct you know what i mean 112 terabytes is enough for 39 million 39 million photos 117 million files and like some 20,000 movies or something actually i just double checked 76,000 movies i don't even know that many movies i don't even think anyone in my entire lineage going back has seen that many movies and going forward for the next 100 years. <laughs> so in other words, uh, this puppy will take you a long time to fill up. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can pass it on to your children and your children's children and a tortoise. Installing the drives is as easy as pulling out the tray, pushing the lock to extend it, putting the hard drive in, locking it into place, and then just simply slide the drive back in, press down on the lock, you're done. The setup process is also super simple. Once you connect your NAS to your router via ethernet, you go to find.ugnas.com and it will automatically find the NAS on your network. From then you just create your username, your password. It'll ask you to create a uh, storage pool and storage space. So in other words, do you want all four drives to be one huge storage? Or do you, for example, wanna use three drives as one large storage and the fourth drive as its own separate storage? Then it'll ask which RAID you wanna use. Like I mentioned earlier, I am using RAID 5. And afterwards, it'll ask you how much storage you wanna use for that pool. That's it. No, I mean, seriously, that's it. You've now set up your NAS and it's totally ready to be used anytime, anywhere. To access your NAS, you can either download the Ugreen NAS app on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, or you can easily access it through a web browser by going on the app, clicking on Control Panel, Device Connections, Ugreen Link Remote Access, and you'll see your web client, which you can now copy. And now, no matter where you are, you can access your NAS without an app. But I, of course, just recommend downloading the app and just having it on your phone, so that way it's just easy access. You know exactly where it is. All you do is log in. You're good to go. Now, something very important to note, if you wanna use your NAS as like a very large external hard drive and you wanna use the click and drag drop from Mac, uh, Max Finder, you wanna go ahead and open up control panel, click on file services and make sure to enable SMB. Toward the bottom, you'll see your LAN access. Go ahead and copy it. Now on your Mac, go ahead and click on go and connect to server. It'll ask for your LAN. So all you gotta do is just paste that into there. It'll go ahead and ask you for your username and your password for your NAS. And that's it, you're connected. And now if you wanna move something to your NAS, you don't even have to use the app or the web browser. You can just copy the file you wanna move, find the NAS server or folder in Finder, and then just paste it into there. But of course, if you want, you can use the app. Like I said, it's very user-friendly. Use whatever you feel comfortable with. If you don't feel like tinkering around with everything that I just mentioned, yeah, use the app. And of course, the same is true for Windows. Open up the app, drag, drop, <laughs> nothing else is needed. So now I wanna show you guys the speed difference of uploading to Google Drive and uploading to your NAS. And I'm just being honest, yeah, prepare to be <laughs> incredibly blown away. All right, so here is my test file. Let's go ahead and see how much uh, space it is. So it's roughly 8.24 uh, gigabytes. So let's go ahead and try to transfer that over to Google Drive at first. 
and then we can see that it's gonna take well it's going down quite you know quite rapidly but let's give it some time to kind of settle so we can see the actual time remaining so we can see that it kind of settled around an hour and six minutes it might go down to an hour and five oh actually it went up <laughs> oh something's see this is what i mean it all it all depends on google servers like it's it's actually going up in time so it's gonna take uh, quite a bit and this is only an eight gigabyte file like it's nothing crazy right i mean look at that it just, it just keeps going up and up that's that's insane we're approaching the two hour mark so um that's quite fun so let me go ahead and cancel the upload and then we're gonna go ahead and try to copy that file on over to my nas so click drop by the way uh this is my personal folder i pinned it to my favorites so this is on my nas obviously you can see the terabytes remaining let's go ahead and drop it and then you sh yeah so there we go less than a minute remaining 8.24 gigabytes um so i don't know you guys tell me which do you prefer do you want to wait over two hours to upload eight gigs or do you want to wait about 10 seconds <laughs> I mean, the choice is, um, it's quite simple for me. Now, remember in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this NAS has local AI. Well, let's say you want to cancel your Google Photos, which is exactly what I did because I have like unlimited storage sitting a foot away from me. Well, if you upload all your Google Photos into the NAS, you can still kind of search through your photos with AI, similar to how Google does it. Want to find photos with cars? Just type in automobile. Want to find a specific person in your photos? Yeah, you can do that too. Or hey, you're maybe your favorite pet. Yeah, you can. And again, keep in mind, this is local AI. It's not connected to the internet. It's not connected to literally anywhere. It's, it's just in it. It's in the box. <laughs> Could you guys tell that I'm not really like advanced in this stuff? But that's that's the point. If I can do it, you can do it. Oh, by the way, another pro tip for you guys, if you want your phone to back up photos and videos from your camera roll to your NAS, like right after you've taken them, super easy. Open up the app. You'll see uh, sync and backup right there. You wanna go ahead and click on it, backup photos, turn it on. That's it. Like it's, it's like, like I said, super user friendly. I honestly don't know why I didn't look into NAS systems before. I probably didn't even know they existed, to be honest, but I'm super happy Ugreen was my first one because again, I love simplicity. If something makes it, if something makes life difficult for me, I'm not gonna use it. I'm not gonna tinker around with it for hours to figure out why it's not working, then use ChatGPT to figure out how to make it work. With this, it just it just it's basically almost plug and play. I mean it, it's that simple. So what do you guys think of the Ugreen Nassing DXP4800 Plus? Again, try saying that fast five times in a row. Let me know your opinions down below in the comments. Again, if you're looking for a crazy amount of storage and you don't wanna keep things locally, or I'm sorry, on the cloud, I mean, because of maybe security issues or slow download and upload speeds, look into this i mean uh, ugreen has a ton of options for these uh nas devices they have a two bay a four bay i believe a six bay i think and i know for sure they have an eight bay so i mean dude storage until the end of the world now if you guys want i will have a link down below that'll save you 15 percent if you do choose to buy one of these so yeah don't miss out Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, by the way, on this NAS, please ask me because I am actually using this. I'm not just doing this for the review and then just selling it off. No, I spent a lot of money on drives and um, I'm, I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> That's for sure. So I'm using this puppy every single day. Again, if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And as always, this was Mark from Mark's Tech. Adios.